What is it? Day five already. It's my fifth session. Oh, that's amazing. I'm actually getting, uh, you know, <laughs> better at this. Keeping at it. And uh, Against All Olds, which used to be a favorite song of mine. Go look it up. It's not interesting. Um, as you can see, I'm alive. I feel better, I think. Especially for, uh, you know, sharing my travails with uh, some of you guys out there. Somehow, just... I'm using my courage that I apparently have for myself now by putting the words out there by just you know devil may care kind of attitude um just going for it just um putting words to emotions that have never really had any text to them and um and then that helps it just helps to make a new kind of a statement for me it's a solution I have, you know, drawn, painted, uh, written poetry, etc. all my life. There is less of a medicine value in that for me. Also because of the training I've had and because of the, you know, cultural ideas that are in my head and etc. I will always tend to try to make something nice. And it's really hard for me to express what I expressed in my video uh, at the end of the afternoon yesterday, my afternoon, that is, uh, whichever time of day it was for you, um, then um, it, it, that's much more effective to put it in, in words, to just, you know, sling it out there and sometimes it just has to, uh, this is just the way it has to be. And it wouldn't be honest and it wouldn't be fair if I didn't also share these kinds of uh, things. If it was always, you know, very self-assured and uh, never a tear on this face. That's not the reality. Not at all. So, I want to link up uh, content-wise also slightly uh, with that. I have realized that actually what um, has haunted me all my life uh, that I've expressed in that last video um, was really people's judgment of me. And if I put it like that, then it sounds like just about every other human being on this planet. Um, whereas because of the situation I was in, I was very dependent on my mother as I grew up, up until she passed away and I was 28 at that time. So, um, you know, there's been a long period of my life where I should have been growing up and getting relationships and working and interacting and learning stuff in general that I spent basically, um, more or less chained hand and foot to my mother's needs, my mother's invalid's you know, needs and things that needed to be done for her and keeping her company and being always at her beck and call. And um, there was a lot of pressure in there. And not only was that already an unpleasant situation, I was also, uh, she was rather a strict disciplinarian. So anything she said, that's what went. And anything she thought, that's the way things had to be. Her words were the absolute truth kind of thing, you know. So... Um, that's a couple of little, you know, illustrative items to go with that story, with that emotion that I projected yesterday. And um, I've always felt uh, like there was no real room for me. And I was very much also my father's daughter. And because my parents didn't get along, nar -ni -nar, the well-known story by now, um, she disapproved of everything because they've always also disapproved of her and the relationship with her parents from, you know, from my mother to her parents was one of general um, ubiquitous, what do you call that, um, four corners of the world disapproval. They disapproved of her. So to me, all that has been hell and a nightmare. And it's been a nightmare that lasted for longer than 28 years because I uh, I didn't know how to get out of any of it. I was completely programmed to behave according to those rules. And it's only now, only since 2017 or so, that I have found other things to worry about and uh, that I've found that I can actually be more than um, just this 
what do you call those one of those things that you shoot darts arrows at one of those uh, shooting uh, bullseye that type of thing anyway so that was just a footnote uh, to go with the last bit of emotional vlog over there and so on to day five of the kwanzaa and it is about purpose i was watching as usual Oya's girls um, 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 episode about this and I was in a bit of a muddle so I had to stop the video pause the video and uh, look at my cards again and sort of look at the list of questions and for before I could it got it right before I got the because there was this ancestor vibration and I was like up to here with ancestors myself just to be clear about it okay and it's got nothing to do with your ancestors it's just my own. But I had to know I was invited to pull a card uh, for the ancestors. And I got, because I took out the Halloween oracle for a change, because I thought that was funny, uh, the three of imps for them to represent them. And it's not just my parents. I know it's the other guys as well. And it's probably what uh, Queen Osset also said. It's not every person in your lineage that dies becomes an ancestor. So that makes sense. I get that. So, but what struck me about this image here in the Halloween deck is that there is two on this side and number three is on that side and holds not so much a flaming brand over there as a, what looks like a palm tree. So this is very much the way I like to see my direct fam family, my, uh, the household I uh, was or lack thereof that I grew up in. This is me, and that is the rest of the world, okay? So, I had this close by, and then I got into a bit of a confusion, as I said, about um, the which one was my personal purpose, and which one was my ancestral purpose, and somewhere I just had to get back to the list. And the list gives me this, card number one, personal purpose, knight of discs, right there. Um, if I hold my fingers in front of that, you can't see it. It's a really pretty card that I've had a couple of times. And there's quite a number of knights in the whole operation. It seems to me like there's, of all the court cards I've been getting in so far in the spreads for the Kwanzaa, there's a lot of knights in there. Anyway. Ah, uh, tiger. Always good. Uh, knight of discs. Love discs, love pentacles. Good thing to have. Uh, personal purpose. Amen to this. I uh, I like it. The next step, I didn't write out all the details for the questions because, as I said, I got muddled a bit. Um, to honor that pers purpose, I get the chariot. And this is a really pretty chariot. Look at that. All the animals. Don't you look? Happiness. Happiness with animals. Oh, sounds like a plan. I've got two cats. You can see them on my channel around here somewhere and um, I'm just uh, mm, furry happy babies furry babies that's it right there so coming back to you know, a bit more to the card um, I think uh, the chariot has always been one of my top favorite tarot cards in every deck I will you know you have those cards that you always have to see uh, like a deal breaker or something in a, in a deck for you to decide whether you want the deck or not. I'm not really so decisive and so clear, uh, clear cut about those things, but the way that the chariot is represented tends to be rather a big deal to me. So let me put it that way at least. So those two, I think they go together really well and they give me a sense of, okay then, I, you know, maybe I am going to be okay after all and wouldn't that be something and let's just have springtime and go out for a coffee and all that. Then we get to the ancestral purpose bit again. <laughs> I'm going hee hee because this is the card that I get. Should I have any illusions about an ancestral purpose? Maybe not. You know what? Um, 
whatever it means, whether I care about them or not, or whether how much can I change about that anyway? Their purpose of my parents and my grandparents and their going back in time has been defeated again and again. And it's a sheer miracle that I sit here and talk to you guys. So no wonder that it hurts. Shouldn't it hurt? Shouldn't it be, it wouldn't just be completely freaky if I just sat here going la 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 about, uh, you know, whatever, you know, whatever type of makeup I bought or some, I got new glasses, you know, that type of thing without a care in the world, not going to happen. So I respect this Ten of Swords card very much, especially considering the rest of the spread. I think it speaks for itself. And that's one other thing I was going to say. Uh, I think tarot isn't so much a tool as it is a language. And that just makes me go weak like that because you speak the language and I speak the language and only have to show you a card and you go, oh God, yes. Or, oh yay, that's a nice card. Or that's spot on. Or, because I don't even have to explain it. You know what I mean. Because you know what the cards mean. Ah, that's excellent. I love it. For once, I don't have to. I can actually talk about myself and my whole, well, my, you know, <laughs> my problems. And I only have to show you a card. So, um, the next card, number four, would be about how to honor and respect the ancestral purpose. And there's the Knight of Wands again. By being a sovereign human being. That's my, I just link that those words are linked for me to this, this animal, this individual. Remember in, um, I think it was the, the first card ever on, on day one about um, unity, how I see unity, etc. I see it as personal sovereignty. Unity is in here. Yay. So I honor the old guys, not them. These. I honor these by being this. That I can live with. I still have a hard time, you know, because that's all I'm really doing here. I'm convincing myself of things that I already know are true. So on with that. Because then it goes to collective purpose. Queen of Cups. What, me? Yes. Um, great. I love it. And she has a, a lobster down here. Or is it a, a cancer type? I have Venus, Mars and Jupiter in the sign of cancer all three of them together it's one of the hookups where my ancestral shit tribal has hooked into my uh my nature my identity through aspects to black moon pluto and all the rest of it uh quite a number of my planets have been affected by that and um I suppose nowadays what I do best is being a, a homely person, you know, spinning. And yesterday evening when I was, uh, you know, with all my, all my memories and all the cold and all the harshness and all the people trying so hard to get me to believe or, or imagine or, um, you know, work along with things back in the day. And me not getting any of it and just being all over frozen and in trouble. What I did after that, I made dough for pancakes. What's that called? Pancake batter. With raisins and nuts and eggs and milk and the whole, you know, not from, uh, not out of the, out of the supermarket. Uh, I went and got eggs at the supermarket. <laughs> but otherwise, it's just a whole load of pancake batter because it was supposed to work for it yesterday and today as well and we'll probably have some left over for tomorrow as well and there's um i don't know what you call it buckwheat flour in and 
is that called spelt in English? I don't know. It's like an alternative for wheat, but it's a bit more, it's less uh, allergenic and it's more nourishing. So those two, and they're both organic. And I put a whole bottle, little bottle of beer, that's also organic, in as well. And uh, so you get the most beautiful um, pancake batter you can imagine. And um, I could kind of feel that the Queen of Cups would approve. So <laughs> feeding the people. I love that, feeding the people. And it gets even better. Because the next step, actioning my collective purpose, is the lover's card again. I was going to come along with my husband to drive his ass around the town and to the client this afternoon. But it was like plus two degrees outside. Let me check. Oh, plus four and a half by now. And it is three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, which means driving him around. And it means most of the time I just sit in the car reading, waiting for him to show up again. When the job's done at the, at the client's respective, you know, one after the other. Not when it's four degrees outside. I freeze my ass and it gets dark quite early and I decided against it. What with all the emotional um, upheavals and all that. So in this case, love was better served by my staying at home, doing a Kwanzaa. And I've got a couple of other, you know, little tricks on my sleeve, up my sleeve, I should say. And um, the cards have responded in kind. So there we are. Because card number seven, how I can help build and develop my community in this context. And here's a really nice card, which Queen Osset also has a couple of times. The star. And the star is in her underbelly. See that? So like right in the middle of the of the whole figure I have to be in my center that's quite a big center if I look at that type of thing I have to go through these cycles apparently I just have to go through I have to acknowledge whatever it is that needs acknowledging and if there's these memories that come up I just have to follow my own emotions wherever they go and it'll be okay I will I will live through this. I will always have, even though um, I used to be so good at hiding from things and because I wasn't ready to deal with them. But now it is a different story. I can actually deal with much more. I can get more um, processing done in my own in my own life, in my own consciousness, in the way I feel. It is not the same today as it was yesterday. Case in point. So, um, I also pulled an oracle card like I'm supposed to. Because I'm still using my Brumi oracle for that. At the end of the Kwanzaa session. And I get this one. Which is called the Blessing of Zahra. And it's sometimes a bit hard to really get what that's supposed to mean. You can look it up in the book, etc. And I'm not going to read it all out to you. Because I'd rather do my own talking. Um, what strikes me about this really is that she has like these tiny little flowers that she holds to her breast and all in general I love the colors and the green and the blue and all that so this gives me it goes really well with star card even though that the star card is is got surrounded by people right there it's really very uh, earthy looking to me color wise uh, this might also be a star card right um, it fits really well and we are progressing through January already today is what the 10th or something so we're one third into the month already um, it's going to be okay there will be little flowers again there will be green inexorably coming whether we are ready for it or not there will be springtime and this is a bit of a this is season in the Netherlands. It's very still outside. Uh, it's rather cold. The nights are frosty because uh, the cloud cover breaks up and then uh, there's a wind from the north and it gets really cold. And sometimes you get a tiny bit of snow now and then. I hope we get a bit more snow because it's nice to look at and I just love the general atmosphere when there's snow 
and um, we'll just have to take it one day at a time and see how things go, right? So I have one other little item that I'm going to just, you know, add on to my Kwanzaa uh, episode for today because I had a lot of fun. Here it is. You haven't seen this yet because I haven't uploaded it yet. All my new deck stuff. It is coming. Um, maybe I'll upload it right away so you can look at those. Um, got the steampunk tarot, got the Halloween, etc. I made a video about those, but I hadn't uploaded it yet because I had so many other things that I wanted to do first. But I also got soul cards. Two, but the both of them. Soul decks, soul cards one and soul cards two. And they're in a package, they come in a package, and on the back of the package are all these, all these little guys. See that? So I don't know if you recognize them. <laughs> of course I had to cut them out and paste them onto this. I'm going to color them in. Can I see? Yes. Down at the bottom you can see slightly what the colors are going to be like. Because I'm kind of trying to follow the shapes of each card a bit. And then I will cut them out individually and maybe think of something for the backs, maybe not. And I will have to find a container for that. And that will be my traveling edition of the soul cards. I don't know whether it's possible to use them because it'll still be, they're really thick, the, the images, so you can see. <laughs> anyway, um, I picked out, I left out a few of them of the complete selection that was on the packages because we're, both of those are in here. Uh, that were really, uh, because they were so small, because you, you couldn't always make out really the details. So I used only those, which is all this lot. Um, what was it? A hundred and something. More than a hundred. Um, where you can, even in this tiny shape, tiny size, you can still see a lot of the detail of the cards. So I'm pleased. I like it. And it, I did it like... I'm going to finish that off in the next couple of days or so in between other things. And um, it's like making miniatures is, um, like I've said uh, a couple of other times on my channel already, it has everything to do with not taking up so much room and being clandestine about things and honoring. In, in that, I kind of always have honored my inner child who didn't get any, any room or didn't feel like she got the room that she needed anyway. And um, so that's all there is to it, really. It's just, and I think it's just a waste to throw away. They went to all this trouble to put, to color print, color, you know, all these on the back of the packages. I'm not going to chuck that away. That's just impossible for me. I, ooh, it'll, you know, yeah, it'll freak me out. Clandestine soul decks, clandestine, uh, subversive, uh, no, not, no longer subver subversive. I am in here, and I'm also in here, knight of discs. And there's knights, and there's a queen, and there's a star. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you again for watching, you guys. You mean everything to me, with your comments and your support. You're amazing. And um, we're all in it together, aren't we? Hang in there, guys. And um, I will be seeing you soon. Bye-bye for now.